what's up you guys it is Duresa Dubale welcome back to my youtube channel if you are new to my youtube channel please like and subscribe to get more academic based videos easily in this video i am going to share you very important concepts to see about more on comprehension members so after completing this unit we would be able to know more about introduction about compression members forms of compression members and the classification of the cross sections and euler buckling formula and all of this will be the objectives to be attained after completing these units so a structural member is considered to be um, a compression member if it is designed primarily to resist only axial compression force so when a member resists only axial compression member so it's known as compression members though if the bending action is quite significant the member is termed as beam column and designed in different way so the most common so the most common uh, the most common structural elements in a in an ordinary structure and are variously termed as column posts struts or stanchions so the two main differences between tension and the compression members are tension members are held straight by means of tensile loads while in compression members the compressive load tends to bend the member out of the plane of the loading in the case of compression members these all are the examples for the compression members the roof truss the bridge truss the industrial building the multi story buildings and these are the example of the compression members this is the cross section w section universal con compression member Inversion column, built up section, button section, this all are double angle, CHS, RHS, circular hollow section, uh, rectangular hollow section. This all are the examples. And uh, in this unit, the, mo the most one is about classification of cross sections. So the design of a cross section subject to compression members, compression depends on its classification. So according to UBCS 3 1995, the cross sections are classified into four categories. So the first class class is class one cross section. It is known as plastic sections. Uses the plastic moment resistance. And class two cross sections compact sections. Class three semi compacted section and class four thin walled cross sections. These all are the four cross sections which are according to the EPCS 3 1995 Ethiopian Building Code standard and and the cross section when the cross section is composed of different plate elements the most of these elements can be separated into two categories web and flanges uh, the first one is internal elements these elements are considered to be simply supported by two edges this uh, the internal elements these are the waves and the outstand elements these elements are considered to be attached along one edge and free on the other edge. This the outstand outstand element is the flange and the internal element is the wave. This and the Euler critical stress. The critical buckling load for the pin ended column is calculated by using this formula. And uh, in this part we have to we have to see more on slender ratio of the column that measures uh, the column tendency for the buckling uh, so the importance of slenderness ratio is to measure the column tendency for the buckling. And this is the example for the column buckling. And this is the variation of critical stress with slenderness ratio. So we are going to use these formulas to calculate the slenderness ratio and more these values to calculate. And the typical cross sections. In the typical cross section section, section should be proportioned such that to have the less slender or largest radius of gyration. So slenderness and the radius of gyration are inversely proportional from this concept we are using. And the circular pipe has the highest for the given cross-sectional area and it is equal in all directions but very difficult to connect to other the other dis the disadvantage is difficult to connect with other structural members. And the design steps for axially loaded compression members are uh, in the previous videos we have seen more about the tension members and in this more we are going to see about the compression members the design steps for actual load compression members 
So in the step one, determine the axial load. In the step one, we are going to, we have to determine the axial load. And step two, determine the buckling length, which is the function of Coulomb length and the statical system of the column. And select a trial section. In step four, we are determine the class of cross section according to the EPCS from the four class of the cross sections and determine in step five we are going to determine the non-dimensional slenderness ratio in step six by using table 4.11 from ECS 3 1995 determine the appropriate buckling curve and in step seven using table 4.9 from the EPCS we are going to find the value of reduction factor x. Interpolation must be used to determine the more exact value when it is directly, not directly fit to the numbers in the table. In step 8, calculate the design buckling resistance. So in step 8, we, are, we have to calculate the design buckling resistance. And in step 9, we are going to check more values the completed buckling crystal against the applied load. So in this we have to care we have to take care in this step. If the calculated value is inadequate or is too high, select another section and go back to step four to adjust that one. And so to calculate the resistance of a compression members there are so many cases. So the first case is compression resistance of a cross section. For members in axial compression the design value of compressive, compressive force should be less than or equal to the compressive resistance of the, the cross section. So, from this, we understand this one. And when we are calculating the compressive resistance of the cross section for class 1, class 2, and class 3, we are going to use this formula, which is similar to that of the, the tensile members calculation formula. Era times yield strength is over the partial safety factor. and for the cross for the class four cross sections, it is thin world cross section. So we have to take um, instead of area, the, we have to take the effective area and partial safety factors. By using this formula, we can calculate for the class four cross section. And for the, by using this formula, we can calculate the net uh, the compressive resistance equals the plastic resistance and the resistance. The buckling resistance of compression member, so we, the design buckling resistance of compression member shall be taken as this. By using this formula, we can calculate, and this is the beta value one for class one up to three, and beta value equals to the, the ratio of effective area to total area or gross area for class four cross section. This x is the reduction factor for the relevant buckling mode. And calculation of effective area, we have, some, we have seen more about calculating effective area. And we, are, we, are, we have to see this from the EPCS3. And calculation of effective area is explained in also this. Here, these are examples of the cross sections. This is the table 4.1, which is used to calculate the, the cross sections to limiting width to two thickness ratios. So by using this table, we, we determine the class of the cross sections. And if the ratio of C to T thickness of flange is less than or equal to this value, it will be plastic unless compact and semi-compact. If it is out of this range, the class of cross sections is going to be class 4 cross sections. So most pro mostly designing by using class 4 cross section is not more recommended by more uh, elites. And uh, this, this is the to calculate about slenderness ratio. Slenderness ratio shall be taken as follow: it is moment of the ratio of moment of inertia to the radius of gyration about the relevant axis, and determined using the appropriate properties of the gross cross sections. And so after that, we are going to calculate this value. So this is a table we use to select the buckling curve for the cross sections. So the buckling curves are different for for two axes y y and z z if the h to b ratio is greater than 1.2 and for y y cross section we use a for z z z cross section we use b when the thickness of flange is less than or equal to 40 millimeter and it is between this 
we use this one. But then so this is the same. I'm simply reading the table to get the buckling curve. And after that, we we got the buckling curve, and we have the lambda value. So we are going to take the value of reduction factor from this according to the numbers which are got got from the other tables. And in the next video, uh, I will do this two examples. The first uh, question is about this, the column BE, this one, column BE, uh, to calculate and check the resistance of the column this, and the, the second one is about this one, designing the buckling resistance of this universal beam. So in the next video, I will share, the, I will do these two examples. So thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe for more videos. Thank you.